Great Debaters Contest is powered by Blaze, by Safaricom, the Youth Network. Welcome to the Great Debaters Contest. We have pitched camp in Machakos County and we are talking matters sustainable development goals. I am Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yumbok. The motion today is the use of military force on a democratically elected government is justified. Kisao versus Kathiani. We'll let the debaters take the stage now. First proposer, you have three minutes. I go by a suffix motava and a prefix Kelvin. Now, uh, I want, I stand before you with the impassivity of a stoic to propose the motion that the use of military force on a democratic government is justified. Now, basing our argument on the, on, on the point of foreign investors, what impact has military force brought about? We see that in a democratic government, whereby military force is used, there will be peace. So peace goes hand in hand with development. So foreign investors will want to invest in a country, thereby the rate of development will be high. Take a situation and have a morbid introspection about our country. Look at the situation at stake in the, in the terra farmer. You see that we have a lot of Indian Banyans who have come to invest in our country. They are widespread in the nation because we have, we have a lot of peace in our country. On the other hand, on the other side of the coin, take a situation and have a morbid introspection about a country like Somalia. The country has been in a state of political tatters for a long, for, for a long time, simply because there has not, the military force has not been able to conduct its activities well. So what has happened? The country is down economically simply because there are no foreign investors who come to invest. So what does that tell you? That military force on a democratic government is very important. On to my, on to my second point. The, the use of military force on a democratic government brings about, uh, protects the country from external aggression. Have a morbid introspection again and a food for thought about our country. Look at the state. What happened the other day in 2013? The militia groups, that is the Al-Shabaab, they attacked us. If the defense forces or the military force will not, have, will, will not have gone there to salvage our people from these moral delinquents, these obnoxious people who are out to destroy lives for their own gain so that they can gain, what would have happened? We would have lost a lot of lives. Many people would have died simply because the military force is not there to carry out its activities. Look at a situation like what is happening in Somalia. Simply because the military force is not there well or it's not conducting its activities well, it has led to many people dying. The country is in a state of political tatters and aggression simply because it is not being protected well. Now, look at a situation uh, in Rwanda, what happened only the other day and in Burundi. The country also is in a state of political tatters. So I want you to join hands with me today and accept the fact that use of military force on a democratic government is justified. I rest my case. Ladies, you have three minutes for your opening statements. A wise saying goes, what defines a country? It's pride, the state, is the government and the people in the government. That is by a wise person. First of all, my name is Dorcas Mazune Kisau Girls. Military. The resources that are used in the military are so many. To approximately 1,200 billion dollars are used by the countries to fund those people. The military uses a lot of resources. They use a lot of cash, which is exerted on people down on the, on the ground. People who don't know what's going on. They're, given, they're paying a lot of taxes. A country like Kenya so far, we have gone through a lot. Currently, we are going through an economic crisis just because we need funding. If we dare try to bring out military to, govern, to, to take place, we'll use a lot of cash a lot of resources, and that will exert pressure on a common mwananchi, quote-unquote. Violation of human rights. 
I can vividly remember. The Westgate Mall, there was a lot that took place in that place. There was killing. But what did the Kenya Defense Forces go to do? They went and looted. Instead of helping the people there, it was all over media, footages showing how they were looting the resources in that place. Is that what we want? We really don't deserve that. We have a government so far. We have a very stable government. We don't need military force in order for us to be able to stay in peace. We can as well as negotiate because we don't really need military force. On to my third point. We are talking about democracy. What is democracy? Democracy is the gov government of the people, for the people, and by the people. When you try to bring about military, you're making the people afraid because Right now, if in case Kenya Defense Forces, three of them just walk in through this door, I'm so sure a lot of you will be afraid. There, is no, there isn't any unity between the people because they're afraid of them. They're causing trauma. They are not the people we want walking around our cities, walking around our villages. We don't want that. We want to live in peace. We want to have harmony. Do you want your kid going to school afraid of a man in guns, afraid of a man who's carrying stuff that is traumatizing them. We really don't need that. What we need is negotiation. We need peace. And when military is there, they're... Thank you. Okay, rebuttals now, gentlemen. You have three minutes. Um, my name is Humphrey Kareti from Kadiani Boys, and I firmly stand here to, oppose, to propose the motion that use of military force on democratically elected governments is justified. Um, let us base our points on our leaders. We usually elect our leaders from the majority. And when electing our leaders, we do not consider the ethnic group the leader is coming from. But then, when the leader is into power, what does the leader do? If by case, the leader is a tribalist or a racist, he'll tend to put much of the resources of the country to where he's coming from. And without the support of the military or a force, then we are not able to, to restore our, our equality. So the point I'm putting across is that without the military force and in a case where our government is unstable, we can't even restore our, our government. And my second point is on the drugs. Most, especially Kenya, most of our leaders are the ones shipping drugs into Kenya. What can the local Monainchi do? Nothing. That's why I have the military force in place. Um, the military force is grouped into three. We have the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. Without the help of the Navy, then we do not have the control of our coast. The drugs are mostly, into Ken they are, they are mostly put into Kenya through, through the coast. So, with the help of our, government, with our, of our military, they are able to curb this shipment by removing those who are in power and those who are shipping the drugs into Kenya, and thereby they are curbing drug abuse by our youths, which has been a great menace in our country. And to emphasize on his point on the foreign investors, um, the foreign investors, once they come into our country, for example, Kenya, we are going to speak of more development and introduction of new products which can be used to supplement others that are not there or are not affordable to the common monange. And so I rest my case on that. It is a positive case that our military, our military force is used by our democratic country. Thank you. Ladies, you have three minutes for your cross-examination. I'm Faith Kilonzo from Kisau Girls, and I would like to oppose that motion that the military is supposed to be ju justified into the democratically elected government. First of all, I'll oppose that point that was on investment. Even there before, before we had different people who can invest without the military. We do not, mi we do not need military government for the, people to, for the people to be able to invest in the country and the country to grow economically. Point on drugs. The military themselves are part of that government. And since before, we had people who used to bring drugs into the country. How many leaders do we have that are out there selling drugs to people, big drug traffickers, and we, too do, know we do know them? There are very many. My points are, first of all, 
The military can overturn the government anytime. Look at the coup during 1982. What happened? Moy was almost overthrown. He was overthrown by the military. And what were they doing? Nothing. They were just there making up some issues that are not supposed to be there. Making up corruption so that they can lead the government. Making Moy to be out of the government. Secondly, look at the point on lack of transparency and accountability. During the time on the Westgate, what happened? We had people go there. The military forces were sent there. But what happened? They lied to us. It is all over media. They were supposed to take care of the people out there. But what did they do? They pickpocketed. Do you expect the people, the citizens we have, to accept these people as part of us? They will never accept. The former Ministry of Security, before Kainseri, Ole Kunku, what did he do? He refused, that, he refused that he was part of the security. Reason being, he did not have anything to do with them, and they were so bad on him. So I oppose that motion on military should be there. Thirdly, these people cause disunity between countries. Look at a country like China. Since they, are able to, since they are able to use the computers to hack governments, they have been hacking the government of USA. And what is it causing? Disunity between USA and China, which we do not want. We want to live as one. Together we live, together we die together. Why? This is the only thing that we need. A successful country starts with us. A successful country begins with a successful government. And if the state is not successful, then the military force totally is not successful. We are not here to wait and see people die. People are being violated. People have been raped. The women are suffering. But what is the military doing? Nothing. They're just eating the money. It's all over the media. We're supposed to go against these people. We can work as one. Negotiation is the best. Peace is what we want, and we do not want fights by use of guns. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, the proposition have been asked if the military are the only people contributing to the economic development of the country. And the opposition have been asked why they stated uh, that military tends to bring war when in fact they're meant to be the, the peacekeepers. We'll have them respond. Third proposer, you have three minutes. In front of you is Daniel Mugambi from Kadiani Boys High School. And to, uh, to answer your question, the beautiful girl from Kisau, I'd like to answer your question that you, there cannot be peace, there cannot be a development where there is a place where there's no security. You can't get, we are talking about entrepreneurs, we are talking about people starting up businesses. You can't start a business in the place where there is no security, where the place that you think that when you start a business, it will go crumbling down. So I'd like to urge you that there cannot be any economic development where there is no security. So I like even for the foreign investors to invest in a given country, they must be sure of security for their property. So the military play a key role. Other people like say that, let's say that the, the Indians, the, the Israel, Israelites, as we state uh, the Nairobi, Nairobi County, it is a cosmopolitan, whereby many countries are there living there and they are investing on their uh, they are investing and they are from the foreign places. We can also talk about the Del Monte. It is, it is started by a, by a person who is not from this country, a foreign person. He started it and it is continuing well because there is proper security. There is military forces who are playing, uh, who are playing a key role in, the, in peace, whereby development can take place. I rest my, class, my case. Okay, ladies, you have three minutes to respond. My name is Grace Ivy from Kisau Girls. I would like to answer the question that my fella asked about fear of the, the, the military when they enter here. I would like to tell you that during the post-election violence, the military, they, they themselves took place and took part in violating the, the people during the 
the post-election violence. We saw it even in the media, that these people were ruthlessly beating these people. Every time we could see the people being beaten very badly. I will take an example in Mombasa. In Mombasa, when the Al-Shabaab had, had attacked the Westgate, the, the Muslims are the suspects most of the time. They came to the mosque, Masjid Musa, and they attacked them and went into the mosques and took them out and started beating them ruthlessly. I have a friend who personally encountered this. He was even taken to jail just to say who, who incited them to even riot in Mombasa. So I, 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 I don't really think that the military force won't instill fear. They will instill fear when they come here. The first thing you'll ask yourself is, what have they come here to do? What have we done? I'd go to the next question. The, one of the people asked, the military force does not encourage war. I don't think so. The military force really does encourage war. Most of them, during the post-election violence, were paid or they were bribed to, to go and even kill people during this, this, this attack, uh, this election violence, most of them were, co were paid to go and kill these people. And yet, we, we, we thought that they are going to support us. Yet they weren't. Instead, they were killing us, but indirectly. Finally, I would like to leave you with this question. Let us all think about the, the harm the military force has done to us. The destruction of property, the loss of lives, rape cases, even overturning the government. I would like to leave you with this question. Are these the same people we expect to protect us? Thank you. We're ready for closing statements. Proposers, you have one minute. Yes, that a rose smells better than a cabbage, it does not mean that the rose can make a better stew. What do I mean? We have our own strength. The military has its own strength. What is there is for it to search for its own strength and build on it. So for every matter of fact or every strong argument requires a matter of fact to make it balanced. Thereby, I want to urge you, support us and because a country, a country without a military force is like a body without white blood cells. Have a thought, of, have a thought, a food for thought for that. What will happen to your body? Thank you. I want you to join us, hands, join hands with, uh, hands with us, and allow yourself not to be wallowing in murky waters of our opposers, saying that the military force is out to kill or is out to make people to fear. Join hands with us. Thank you. I rest my case. Opposition, you also have one minute. I will still stick on to my point. My point is, the military is an, it's, it's a very harmful people to us. We as, we as human beings have got our own means of setting our own solutions. We can set our own solutions to problems. We do not need people to come and fight for us. We can fight for ourselves. Personally, when you personally get a problem, do you go call people to come and solve the problem yourself? No. You do it because you have that power. Be a lion. Fight for yourself. Why? A lion has no pride. It does not eat grass. Not because it is proud of itself. But the reason is, it cannot eat grass, no matter the dryness of the jungle. So, why wait and sit for people to be there and step on your foot? Work for you, yet you can do it for yourself. Wake up. Lift yourself up and show the potential that you have. Stop having other people to show the potential for you. We as Kenyan citizens have the potential without the military force. I still stand by that. Kathiani boys, that was a powerful debate. Uh, but our second speaker, Humphrey Kareti, you did not cross-examine. So in future, if you can learn cross-examining skills, then you can be a good debater. And then Kelvin Mutava was a good speaker. Mastery of content was very good. But maybe in future, uh, try to use language that can easily be understood uh, at that level. And then Daniel Mugambi um, had a very good 
introduction and especially by acknowledging the opponent group, which is a positive thing to do. The ladies, uh, I think all of you demonstrated consistency, very good understanding and mastery of the topic, uh, very good consistency in terms of energy levels, conviction, you did very well. Um, still a bit of struggle with giving the source of some of these things you're quoting. When you say um, the military was, I don't know, involved in rape and all that during post-election violence, where did you get that information? For that to be convincing, you need to quote your source, yeah? For you to be authoritative, it's very important for you to say where you got this information from. Mutava, you're outstanding. I think for your team, that was very commendable. And uh, that art of audience engagement, the art of, uh, I mean, I think you have a good vocabulary. I was learning a lot of things from you. I can't forget the, just because the rose smells better than a cabbage. And it doesn't guarantee what, some better stew or something. That's a good thing for me to learn today. So that was very commendable. However, as a team, and I'm addressing all teams, if one of your members is very strong, the rest of the ones following up, you have no other way out than to try and keep the pace, all right? So when Mugambi, you come and only utilize one minute and leave us with two minutes hanging, then you penalize the team. So all the efforts that Mutaba may have done, sometimes is watered down. We feel with all those things that have been pointed out by the uh, panel of judges, you would have done better and justice to this motion. So all the best to the two teams. Kathiani Boys High School was awarded 63%. Please give them a round of applause. Very well, and Kisao girls, the judges saw it fit to award you 68%. You are our winners for the debate. So thank you very much to our judging panel. Thank you to our studio audience and those of you at home for watching. It's been a pleasure. I have been your host, Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yumbok. Catch you next time. The Great Debaters Contest is powered by Blaze by Safaricom, the Youth Network.